what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're going to mostly be talking about the canceled scrapped urban legend reboot that was announced in 2020 and we got a another unfortunate update about it a couple days ago or almost a week ago at this point from Cinestealth. we're going to talk about that mostly and then we're going to also talk about these tidbits on scream 7 and beetlejuice 2. so in 2020 just to get in touch get on the topic of urban legend 2020 it was reported that screen gems had set Colin Minahan to write and direct the thriller Urban Legend. The pick was on a fast track and the studio was currently casting the key roles. Minahan will introduce an iconic new slasher for the digital age in a world where internet urban legends are born and move at a terrifying pace. The movie will center on a diverse cast of college students as they navigate a series of bizarre deaths that resemble urban legends linked to the darkest corners of social media. Then, Sometime later that same year, we started getting reports about who these key roles or who was being eyed for said key roles. Catherine McNamara, Sidney Chandler, and Keith Powers were being eyed for possible roles in the reboot. Chandler, I believe, was reported to actually be the one that would have gotten the lead position or in talks to lead the movie. Then it was just crickets, nothing, for almost two years. A couple years ago, after we went a few years with no updates, Minahan told this to a fan when they asked for an update on twitter because they were just like what the hell is going on with this movie i thought we we're going to get a new urban legend this is what he said in response of what happened to the project a combination of really bad timing with covid politics inside the studio shuffling execs and what i would call terrible choices in what to green light killed the movie it was going to be the dopest lgbtq slasher too also some funky stuff with tv rights when mgm wanted it in 2023 Catherine told this to collider to describe the film that i guess we're not going to get she said it was sort of a new retelling of it was what i can say from the script colin minahan was the director of that he's just a brilliant brilliant mind who has gotten to be a good friend i would love for that to happen that cast was going to be fantastic a lot of friends on that cast the story also reportedly explored deep fake technology too which is funny considering the trouble over or the trouble that i've seen deep fake cause certain celebrities over the last couple of months and the popularity that deep fake has garnered in the last couple of months and years so this film had a chance to be ahead of its time in a way depending on when it was released lately though last week Sinistel told us this about the project urban legend reboot cancellation seems pretty final this time coming after it was delayed canceled revived now cancel again sucks but maybe if i know what you did last summer does well for sony it's not looking good so it's unfortunate that we are not going to get this movie it's a shame that it's canceled completely because i was intrigued by the idea when it got announced back in 2020 but honestly when minahan made that comment to that fan a couple years ago i just thought to myself or in 2022 yeah i just thought to myself well that's the end of that movie i pretty much thought from him and those comments saying it's killed that means it's canceled and i don't i don't think we've actually gotten an official word from anyone that it was canceled but the lack of news and screen gems not having any reports on it after the 2020 date came and went no filming no nothing it was evident that the project was canceled but let's talk about what could have been since the film was going to explore deep fake just a theory of mine so we know in the original film brenda the original killer was upset because natalie and her friend the person who died in the opening because she ran away from brad dorf at the gas station i don't remember her name but natalie and that friend were flashing headlights at her fiance while he was driving causing him to go off the road or be hit by a truck that killed him so she went after natalie and her friends killing them in the in the form of urban legends since that's what they did to her fiance what if the updated retelling of urban legends simply would have been a story where a maniac is killing off a group of teens that culminates into a reveal related to the friend group posting some harmful deep fake content that led to someone unaliving themselves this killer is connected to that victim and targets these friends to get revenge as for the social media urban legend deaths i have no idea what those could have been maybe someone died via the cinema ch cinnamon challenge or something i have no earthly idea how they would have toyed with that but that is one way i could have seen this being a retelling if you were to just take a deep fake content or some sort of deep fake that caused someone some sort of 
life-threatening harm or loads of drama in their life and those responsible for said deep fake were targeted by someone out for revenge something again that's paying homage to what you kind of already did with that original film just now putting it in the vein of the internet that's really all you had to do and it could have been ahead of its time to a degree because look at all the harm that i see deepfake causing a lot of celebrities i think taylor swift was the most recent one or at least the most popular one that i've heard of lately now i'm going to dive into scream 7. so scream 7 is rumored to be dropping in april 2025. now this came from beyond the mask who again has not said that this is confirmed it's just a rumored release variety previously reported last year that scream 7 would be coming in 2025 or at least that's what spyglass has eyed for the release 2025 and nothing has come out to suggest that 2025 isn't still the plan however with there being no script ready we are still likely weeks away from official content and what's going to be really funny is when just a random thought what's going to be really funny is if scream 7 has nothing to do with one through six outside of just being in the same world and the reason i say that's going to be funny is because then the discussion of sam or sydney returning will just be irrelevant but we know it's going to keep on happening and happening and happening and people are going to say oh how this is not the right direction to take unintentionally promoting a movie that they don't want to see but whatever so i'm going to now talk about beetlejuice beetlejuice to wrap up everything beetlejuice beetlejuice apparently includes a cameo after all it might have a few but i only know of the one and i'm going to share some details on that some of you may have known about this cameo and others maybe not i'm not going to reveal the actor's name because there's rumored to be several cuts of this film however if they go with this cut one specific cameo is indeed from someone who has worked with Burton a few times in the past and this person plays a janitor in the film that has an encounter with Beetlejuice's wife Dolores. That's really all I wanted to say. I've heard the film is quite good. It's been received well from many. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. 